Hello, this is Anna, the pretty shepherd, and today I am signing in from my brand new yard. Oh my gosh, how exciting is this? Let me tell you, it's super exciting because I've been living in a teeny tiny mobile house for years now and I finally have space for home decor and plants and cats sleeping in baskets. So she's been sleeping in her cozy little basket and yeah, that officially means it is autumn. The horrific heat waves of the summer have passed, hopefully. We still have a lot of Indian summer days or as we call them in Hungarian, old women's summer. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. That means I don't have to pull out all of my autumn slash winter wardrobe just yet. But the evenings are getting chillier and chillier. Is my hair fit, it fit in the frame? Maybe I should adjust that. Okay, that's a lot better. The evenings are getting chillier, but the weather altogether isn't quite that autumnal yet. However, it is already time to light candles and cozy up the place. And that gave me the idea of giving myself some housewarming gifts. Literally housewarming gifts, because the yurt isn't insulated just yet. Uh, so yeah, it gets, it gets a little bit cold in here in the evenings. And yes, the yurt itself as a construction is finished but it's not furnished to completion just yet so I'm still working on designing and putting together everything into a cohesive look so for now this is my favorite corner it's it's really beautifully arranged and I really love it as a backdrop it will probably be my filming corner like I have corners that I really like corners haha as if a yurt had corners but you get the point the rest of the yurt has some spots that look nice I'm not going to show you the whole of the yurt just yet I can show you a couple of snippets of the areas that I am already satisfied with Oh, and on a side note, I realized that I have too few house plans. Like in my mobile house, I barely had enough room in front of the windows to fit like a dozen small potted plants. Now I have space for an urban jungle, basically. My mother very kindly gifted me a couple of very beautiful house plants. I need more plants. Yeah, if you have any ideas for easy to care for but large plants, you can leave me that in a comment below because because I'm a little bit new to being a plant mom. I am on the lookout for a Monstera Deliciosa. But other than that, I don't really know. What else should I put in here? If there are plant moms among you, please let me know in a comment below. Something that, that grows big and voluminous. And obviously I am going to do a yurt tour video in the future. This is not the yurt tour video, but it is coming soon. Let's tackle the topic of today, which is candle painting. So I've bumped into this idea over on TikTok, but since I've also seen a couple of pictures on Instagram and Pinterest as I did a little bit of browsing around, the point is that you take run-of-the-mill simple plain candles and you paint them with acrylic paint. This is just a plain candle. If you put this on the table, it's like, oh, that's a random candle. But if you have a painted candle, now that's bougie. Now, my original idea was to do folkloric flowers on the candles, but the shape of the candle and the waxiness just prevent me from painting that sort of patterns. Uh, so I decided to stick to smaller flowers, smaller patterns, but I'm still going to paint some flowers that have meaning in folklore. Let's get started! Okay, so we are going to need 
paint, obviously. Something to mix the said paint on. This is just a piece of cardboard with some aluminum foil on it. We will need candles, some paintbrushes, candle holder to put your candle in as you are painting it, because that way you won't smudge the paint around. You'll also need a cloth to wipe away any mistakes and just to clean your brushes and also some water. Okay, now that we have everything, we can start painting our first candle. I'm going to do some forget-me-nots because that's a fairly easy flower to paint. Let me show you. You're gonna need blue, green, and yellow. I am going to use just the tiniest amount of water and I'll start out by painting some dots. There, five little dots in a circle and then five more. And if you make mistakes, don't worry, that's what the cloth is for. You can wipe down everything fairly easily. And I also think I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. Okay, as weird as that is, the cheapest set of brushes seems to be working the best. <laughs> So now the next set of three flowers I will be painting a little bit higher up. And again, I'm gonna turn it around a bit and paint a little higher up. So you end up with the flowers going in kind of like a spiral pattern. This way the flowers will look like they have more of a random placement and uh, that's gonna good look. That's gonna look good. Good look. Okay, so while I'm painting these little dots on the candle, let me tell you a little bit about the folkloric symbolism of forget-me-nots. They are also called forget-me-not in Hungarian, nefelejc, which translates to don't you forget me. <laughs> they are remembrance, obviously, as the name suggests, but the pale blue color of the flower also suggests a sort of purity. So they are often used in the crowns of brides for folkloric headpieces. They will also often appear in embroideries, not necessarily as the main motif, but more of a companion flower to something larger and more showy, like roses or tulips. And if you're thinking to yourself, but Anna, it's awesome, you just said it. Flowers and forget-me-nots aren't a very autumnal thing. Then you're wrong. You're absolutely wrong, because flowers are for all year round. That's the beauty about floral designs, you can use them all year round, at least in my book. I mean, if you look at it from like a folkloric decoration sort of point of view, they wouldn't just switch out their embroidered shirts and aprons and so on just because, you know, it had a pomegranate on it which wasn't seasonal or forget-me-not or a tulip or whatnot. They would use it all year round. These things are pretty and we have the right to bask in their prettiness all year round. Yeah, forget-me-nots are all year round for me. Anyway, I'm finished with the last flower on this candle. Uh, so now I'm going to add some yellows for the middle of the flower and a bunch of leaves. I'll get a bit of the yellow right in the middle. There we go. Look at that. That's the last one. I'm going to make another one with forget-me-nots and then get back to you. A few minutes later. Ta-da! Okay, so the second forget-me-not candle is finished. I made it a little bit more airy than the previous one, uh, but I really like them both. 
While these two are still drying, I am going to give in. Autumn is not just all about flowers and stuff. It's also about berries. A bunch of berries do appear in folkloric decorations and in folk songs very often as well. Now, I wanted to paint some of the berries that we have on our farm and we have a bunch of them indeed. One of them is the rose hip. In Hungarian we simply call it wild rose. Yeah, wild roses. <laughs> and the other one is um, blackthorn. Let me look that up. Yeah, that's the one. It's called blackthorn. We have a bunch of it on our pastures and this is the time that they ripen. Let's get started and paint some berries. We will be needing some red paint for the rose hips. I'm going to start out by painting a little oval splotch, kind of, and then another one, and another one. Now I'll need a narrow paintbrush, paint a couple of the little hairs. Another super duper narrow paintbrush with some green paint on it. Rose hips! And now repeat this indefinitely until you fill up all of the candle. A little bit more space, but I will continue doing the spiral layout. Well, that's finished. I'm going to set this one aside to dry and then I'll get started on the blackthorn one. It's kind of sort of recognizable if you squint at it. Yeah, maybe this one isn't the easiest to do. Unless I try adding a little bit of black paint to make the stems a bit darker. I think I'm gonna try that. Black paint. This is what it first ended up looking like. And let's see if the dark paint can somehow save it. I love it! <laughs> and repeat indefinitely. What's that? You're wondering what the folk song about Blackthorn is? Allow me. I really love how this one turned out. Uh, it's the most realistic, I guess, uh, also because of the brown. And now I'm really tempted to add a bit of brown to these rose hips too. I'm a lot more satisfied with these two. They look a lot more like a set of their own, like kind of sort of a set, not, not like matchy matchy, but like, you know, a set. I'll leave them to dry and it's time to move on to some tulips, which I've tried before and they have been a challenge, but I think I have an idea on how to tackle them. A few minutes later. I don't hate it, but I don't love it either. I don't know, just like the shape of the tulips is like something that doesn't really work with the cylindric shape of, of the candles. That's as far as my logic can take me. Anyway, I still am happy with what I did. I am running out of daylight, so I'm going to end this video here. The only conclusion that I still want to add is the patterns that were easiest to make were the ones that involved dots and mostly circular shapes, so like ovals and very small lines. The tulips, that's like a huge challenge. Please let me know if there's something that I should do differently. So, 
that's it for today thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed it if you want to see more folksy content and just crafty content oh and also if you want to see the yurt tour then please subscribe to my channel because i try to post videos as regularly as my life will allow it maybe i'll get back to posting once a week it would be so awesome i would be so happy about that anyway bye bye